In about one-fifth of time, it takes an operational intercontinental ballistic missile to travel from the mid-California coast, across the western test range, to its target in the micro-oceanic atolls of the Marshall Islands. This video tells the story of what was perhaps the most photogenic missile launch in Vandenberg Air Force Base history. Almost to the day, marking the 20th anniversary acceptance by the Air Force, we'll focus on the task force that tested a Minuteman III missile to ensure it could still perform the mission of delivering a payload to a designated target over 6,000 nautical miles away. To make this happen, a select group of maintenance personnel and launch officers from an operational facility with staff at Vandenberg Air Force Base coordinate to take a randomly chosen missile from a basing location in the central northern region of the continental United States and transport it to California. The missile maintainers prepare and emplace the missile and install specially reconfigured re-entry vehicles that contain instruments to measure accuracy in place of the original nuclear warheads. Launch officers then monitor that missile for a period of what is referred to as soak time, meaning as if the missile was on full alert at its home base. In the meantime, the Vandenberg Launch Director, much like NASA Mission Control, orchestrates the activities of launch countdown and range safety to verify that all systems are go for the test. At that precise green light moment, a message is sent to the launch officers to turn keys. On its journey, the missile uses stages to shed excess weight and accelerate the payload to high velocities. And hurdle the missile up to 700 miles above the Earth's surface. As the ballistic missile flies over the Pacific Ocean, it is monitored by instruments housed at the Air Force Maui Optical Tracking Station, known as AMOS. Here on the lush and verdant tropical paradise of the Hawaiian island of Maui, on the crest of a dormant volcano called Mount Haleakala, at an elevation exceeding 10,000 feet above sea level. Telescopes and other pinpointing instrumentation follow the flight progress toward the southwest Pacific. And the missile guidance system steers it toward an intricate geographical feature of islets and islands that comprise the rim of an ancient volcano called the Kwajalein Atoll. In a compact of free association between the U.S. Army and the Republic of the Marshall Islands, Kwajalein operates with equipment and people congregated between two islets, Roynabor and Kwajalein. The Marshallese, who work amongst the military personnel, live on the islet of Ebai and take a short ferry or canoe commute to the other islets. However, the Micronesia region wasn't always so hospitable to the American military. During World War II, the Japanese occupied Kwajalein, and the German Navy also used the northern tip of Roynamore as a supply depot. In fact, the hyphen in Roynamore, a land bridge between the two islets, was created as a result of German soil that was used in cargo ships as ballast, being offloaded to make room for various war supplies. Today, this added soil stability allows for the positioning of a sophisticated array of radar equipment, such as the Kernan Reentry Measurement System that tracks the incoming projectiles. As the reentry vehicles speed closer to the atoll, they are examined by modified aircraft that collect performance data. Two Navy P-3 Orion Bloodhounds flying in a parallel track at approximately 35,000 feet visually catalog the streaking projectiles that pass between them and relay information back to numerous sites in the test range. With the RVs now approaching the surface, a complex set of tracking radars are brought into play all around the atoll. These sensors are challenged to pinpoint the precise impact location of the projectiles that are now boring down on targets in a glowing excess of 16,000 kilometers per hour. This particular launch targeted the islet of Illigini, and specifically the northern portion, an area akin to the size of a professional football stadium. As one glowing RV strikes Illigini, note the building in the background and the H of the helicopter pad in the foreground as target zone brackets. 
As the second one arrives, note the pieces of pulverized shoreline that land on the helicopter pad. Those pieces will be collected and analyzed as well as any material that falls into the lagoon. The Kwajalein Clean Lagoon Policy also directs that the basin of the atoll be returned to pristine state after each launch. To accomplish this feat, a remotely operated submersible or mini submarine is used to collect re-entry vehicle materials. And when the opportunity presents itself, give the lagoon dwelling inhabitants some exercise. Finally, in ritual tribute to the hard work of the launch task force and to the accuracy of the technology tested, the team will assemble at a local watering hole and the requisite yards that the RV strayed from the bullseye will be consumed by members of the team. As demonstrated here by the launch director, Randy Eady, who at the precise green light moment tips his yard glass and launches the ceremony.